Hello, Lina. Hi. Hi, how are you? Hello, Petra. Sorry for being late. It's just no problem at <laughs> all this, no rush. <laughs> there was an unexpectedly busy day today here in Zurich, which oh, is okay. um which is a blessing also. <laughs> yeah. Are you coaching or teaching? I was I was coached. Um we oh. we might have a concert on um 11th of March if the restrictions allow oh, it. Probably wonderful. not. Yeah. We're still sort of preparing ourselves and staging a little concert for people to hopefully enjoy. That's wonderful. That's I mean, it's it's worth it to hope that it works, that it that that, that yes. you can do it. Yeah. Just by I the mean, way, yeah. I'm I'm recording this. Is that all right? Yes, of course. Okay. Perfectly fine. Okay. So um uh, tell me, so you you are in Zurich at the moment, and where are you from? Yes, I am in the Zurich Opera Studio, and I'm originally from Lithuania, Vilnius. Okay. Um, yeah. Yes, and I've lived there all my life. I mean, I went off mm -hmm. to study to London, to the Royal Academy of Music, mm -hmm. and I joined the Royal uh, Academy of Opera there mm -hmm. and for two years, and then I came to Zurich, and this is my second and last year at the Opera Studio. Oh, I see. Okay, wonderful. And how did you um, enjoy your time in England? I, I honestly, I loved it. Mm -hmm. um, probably the, I guess the English way of thinking is way more closer to me than the Swiss. Oh, okay. <laughs> and especially, yeah. you know, I mean, um, especially in a place like London, you know, this is such a culture mashup that I guess everyone can find themselves sort of at home. Yeah. You know, whenever, yeah wherever you come. That's true. Yeah, that's true. So, um, yeah. oh, how did you start with music? What age were you um, when you started? So, I I was born into a family of musicians. Mm. My mom is a solfeggio teacher, and my dad is a choir conductor. Yeah. So I was already sort of born into classical music, mm. and I honestly i I hated it at first. You know really? when they have this? Mm. I did. You know when they have mm. those concerts, with little children. Mm -hmm. um to sort of sit and enjoy classical music I was the kid who was like dropping you know all sorts of, of things on the ground because I was mm -hmm. just bored I was boring as hell <laughs> oh really and and yeah. but not even that you heard it in the house or that your parents or you heard it from your parents and and that didn't make you um no. enjoy it no it didn't mm -hmm. I just you know when something is Sometimes it happens like as an aversion, I guess, when parents try to mm. make you like something so bad that you end up not liking it. Mm. So I think that's what happened a bit. But then I I, I sang in a choir for, well, let's see how many years, 13 years. So when mm. I started, I was five and I sang there until I was 18. So I still got my good share of classical music. And that's actually how I first um actually encountered very intimately encountered opera because um we were invited our choir was invited to sing uh, sort of children's roles in um in the Boris Godunov by Madas Mussorgsky and that was the, my first sort of real very close close-up encounter with the opera house and the way it works and the opera itself which in turn made me well in a span of a few years so I want to be a singer mm -hmm. And then my mom is just like, no, you don't want to be well, a singer. You don't really? want to be a singer. <laughs> yeah, because she said, you know, this life, this life is hard. You know, it's it's not, and especially from people that grew up in the Soviet Union, financial stability is something that was very important to them. And I was like, I, yeah, I know I won't make, you know, a lot of money. It's not, but it's not too important to me as long as I can, you know, live okay. And yeah, and sustain myself. But then, of course, I didn't listen, and I went went off into music. Oh, okay. And <laughs> um, yeah, but that is that is the thing that when you do you do something you love, you know, you uh, then it doesn't matter. Uh, the rest doesn't matter as long as you do what you love. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, no. I mean, it was maybe about two years since I well when I started my studies bachelor's degree in at the Lithuanian Academy of Music my parents were sort of like okay okay fine fine mm -hmm. yeah yeah so there was there wasn't like a huge fight about it they were yeah, just like yeah. are you sure you really want to do this mm -hmm. 
But I think that's also important for parents to make sure that this is really what the children, you know, what you wanted to do. So they really made sure that it's it's uh, comes from within you and not yeah uh, just just something that you do yeah. And especially with my parents, with my hatred for classical music for the most of my childhood, mm. they were pretty like, okay. If she really wants to go, then probably you know, probably mm. it's a true thing then. <laughs> yeah. So the school so that you were in, did they? You just you sang in the choir, but did you do play instruments as well? I did. So um, in Lithuania, it works that we have um, you have your normal school that you go in the morning, I guess, in the early afternoon, and then you have. Um, like a hobby school but it's quite serious so the music school is also you know you have different subjects and you learn harmony and you know solfeggio and piano I learned to play piano um, and then there's choir you can you know you can choose a specialization I guess you can you know pick a whatever instrument you want of course I picked singing um, so that was my my life for for the most of the most of my childhood and teenage years and I did I did have a huge passion I still do for psychology and I really wanted to go into criminal psychology originally mm -hmm. um, yeah but then then I you know made up my mind to mm -hmm. to be a singer mm -hmm. I mean psychology is, is a huge part of singing you know whether you want it or not mm -hmm. um, it's you have to deal with people every day very different people and also deal with yourself and especially in times like corona it's it, I found it such a such a helpful thing. Yeah, of course. That um, also uh, the the mindset about this, you know, the mindset about this whole situation. So, we yeah. were you in Zurich during lockdown? I was. Um, well, not all of it, definitely. Mm -hmm. So, when the first lockdown happened back in March, I think there were rumors of borders closing and borders closing both in Switzerland and in my home country, Lithuania. So I just went straight to the opera studio people. And I was like, can I please, can I please leave? Because the, the borders are gonna close soon and they already canceled the rest of the season. So I was like, they were sure, go, go ahead. And I spent the, the first lockdown at home back, back in Vilnius with my family and my boyfriend and was absolutely, it was amazing. Mm. I mean, Corona, Corona is is a curse, yeah. but also in some ways it, it was a blessing for me. Because why was it for you a blessing? If me, it was a blessing because I could go home and see my family yeah. mm. and some loved ones. So because usually, you know, if you're in, a, in an opera studio, you're usually quite employed and quite busy and you cannot really leave in the middle of a production unless it's something very urgent. And um, beforehand, when I was in London, you know, it was also full time studies, so I wouldn't. And, you know, with a with a boyfriend in Lithuania, we also mm. we, I enjoyed that time as much as I could. And I, I can really say, actually, I came back way more rested and way more inspired mm. to try new things and to continue working. So for me, that was a blessing in the sense that, of course, it was absolutely horrible the first two weeks mm. um, it was truly traumatizing I can actually say that because everything that you looked forward to um, just fell apart you know mm. and still it's happening now but what it did teach me is in a way to distance myself from work only so you know from the thought that only work can make you happy and it's the only thing you should pursue in life um, so it sort of um, made me, I guess, or helped me find a better balance between my personal life and between my work life. Mm. So that, you know, when when something doesn't go as planned, you're not absolutely, you know, in the darkest, deepest sadness and sorrow that that, you know, that you can find. So I think that was a very important lesson that Corona can teach people is also not, you know, not sticking so much and not expecting things to did happen. You, did you feel those, the, the first few weeks, uh, you say that almost as if you, you're scared that everything will get away from you? you know, yes. Mm. 
especially I'm I'm quite a um, I guess person who likes to you know plan things, and for me it was absolutely you know the feeling of just the earth just going away from your feet. Yeah, it's just it's just that yeah. it's like oh my God, what is this? So it was absolutely it was weird and it was truly it was just depressing. Mm. The things you know that you looked forward to got cancelled, and you don't know if it's actually. Oh, I mean, I do remember thinking that. Okay, fine. A few months by the end of the season, this is going to be all fine. Mm. And then, uh, did you did you also uh, uh, think you're going to just let go in the, these weeks, or did you still practice? Did you think, uh, or were you scared that maybe if you don't practice, then you'll um, not? I wasn't. Be yeah, no, I completely let go. Oh, okay. I, I haven't sung for three months mm. because I felt that that was what I had to do. Just to forget about, not forget, but sort of just put that part of me aside in a way. Of course, I sang in my shower. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, not, not actually professionally mm. working on, on, you know, anything. But I think that also helped me to get out of it. I found myself things to do. It was actually the time that um, we we were having it. We we had a new apartment, and there was a lot of planning to do. It was just these all simple things that, and to visit my family, my parents because they live really nearby. I got into bread baking. I learned how to make mm. sourdough bread. I learned yeah. how to knit. I learned mm. how to plant flowers. It was just a different, I guess, thing to do. So finding more things to be happy about, mm. you know in the darkest of, of times, I guess, that we've experienced. So that that helped me immensely. And also just taking care of your body, of your soul, and not, in a way, not expecting yourself to get better. Uh, because I think the mistake that, you know, all of us do is, okay, why are you, you know, you're not fine? You should get better in your, because for singers, if you don't feel good, your voice just suffers and goes goes to complete shit. Um, so for me, it was quite important to restore the balance, I guess. And um, do you think in, uh, uh, now that you are back, do you do things differently? I do. Mm -hmm. I take care of myself more. That okay. is the thing. Yeah. Because I, I had a, I guess... So when I got back in September, we had a wonderful, actually Boris got enough again, um, but actually mm -hmm. got, a, got to play a role and mm -hmm. it with, was with Barry Kosky and it was absolutely amazing. So that was very inspiring. But then I had a sort of a weird tiredness always going on and I couldn't figure out why, why it was happening. And it started to really, really affect my everyday life. I couldn't sleep for more than two or three hours uh, per night. It was just this, this huge anxiety mm. building up again from somewhere. And finally, I did figure out what was happening. Um, I, my body was completely depleted of iron, mm. just absolutely. And basically that, that was the main thing that was causing all the problems, mm. but it did, um, yeah, I, I, you know, I went to a doctor, I, sorted it out and now it's okay but it was also um it was also a, a little wake up call of sort of you are not taking care of yourself somewhere yeah or yeah. you you know you you pushed yourself too hard mm. so that now i am way more cautious about and i try yeah i try to implement the things you know that help me to my everyday life like you know exercise mm. of course um eating healthy and meditation Mm. mindfulness is is an, a very good good amazing thing mm. for everyone I think and especially in these times to sort of learn how to distance yourself or just you know not to get so drawn into your emotions and the things you know because we you know we we always we all think too much sometimes and maybe and think about not the best or happiest things we usually we usually drown in the most you know saddest and traumatizing and problematic thoughts that we can have and it's definitely not good for anyone I think mm. so learning mindfulness and meditation probably was one of the most important decisions I've I've made do you also think because you're a young young um person or singer yeah. but uh, 
that actually uh, um, sometimes you're a bit too impatient to get the things that you really want and that this time where you were stopped in a way and and do you think that this has given you this ability to be more patient or that you can now see that time really will uh, take its course and benefit you in, in the long run? That is absolutely true. I, I, I could not have put that into words much oh, okay. better. I, no, it's, it's, yeah, because it gives you a different perspective and also a, a thought that, you know, that singing and work is not everything and it shouldn't be everything mm. in your life. Because if, you know, if you just get hung up on that, then something like Corona happens again and you're absolutely, you know, you're depressed again mm. and you don't know what to do with yourself. Um, but yes, that has taught me so much patience and not expecting anything to happen really. Mm. Because we, of course, like we as humans, we, we expect so many things of, of ourselves, of other people, especially. And, you know, of, of things, things that will happen. And it's really, it can happen. I mean, mm. basically we can die any minute and it might not happen ever. Yeah. So trying to let go of those expectations and of impatience, I guess, tied to them. And sort of that, I think young, I guess, in young people's impatience. I mean, I'm a young person, but still the, the sort of um, perfectionism is, is good to a degree yeah it's good to, um for me because i am i do consider myself a, a perfectionist in a way that i will i will beat myself up for any and all mistakes that i make so that is actually patience and kindness learning patience mm. and kindness to yourself yeah but you I've, know, and it mm. extends to other people i think too yeah I've seen a lot of people baking sourdough bread, you know, uh, on yeah. Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> and that also made me think that, um, you know, normally we would, people would buy instant yeast and make mm. a quick bread. And now yeah. people have the time to, because, you know, yes. the process of sourdough, it's, it's a long process and a long, Oh yes. Yeah. And uh, yet the bread, the sourdough bread is so much nicer than if you bake it with instant yeast. So that's actually, um, I think, a, a, a good life lesson that mm -hmm. we can take from, from baking bread as well, you know, that, that it takes its time and it, it has to uh, ferment or the, the, the process yes. has to happen yes. in its own time, you know, and then of course this wonderful bread um can be baked yeah of course it's way slow but the result is 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 way way better exactly and that yeah. is the same you know with expecting yeah. things to happen i guess yeah patience yeah so um but that's wonderful that you can already see this that period as a as a time where you you know could learn something from or mm -hmm. take something yeah. away that you could yeah and then as the time went on, could you perform in the summer? Um, well, I did have one concert of singing mm. um, Bach's uh, Misa in B minor, mm. so B minor mass. Um, and then I went off to Zurich to rehearse for Boris Godunov, and then we closed again. <laughs> oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, then we closed again. So... Um, I was supposed to uh, do a new production of, of an opera for children, Alice in Wonderland. I would have played Alice and I will play Alice in two years. Mm -hmm. I think it's yeah. um, so that was a very, it was a very, you know, it was a very sort of dear to heart and very stabbing mm -hmm. cancellation uh, because I think we were a week from performing our first show and they closed it down again. But again, I take these situations as something that that will probably help me in way in a way or another way sometime you know down down in life um because yeah as i said not expecting really anything and not being tied to one decision or another yeah uh, in some cases probably and being flexible in your thinking is a thing to learn from these times 
Yeah, I think also um, these things teaches us that that everything happens at the right time. So probably when you do, Alice, you will be right for the part exactly, or you would have, not that I say you're not now, right? But maybe mm -hmm. in two years time, it would be a little bit different than it would have been now. You never know. You know? So yeah. I, I always look at things like that, that if it doesn't happen now, then probably it was just not the right time for it, yeah. I think so too. And mm. also a very, I think it's a very healthy way to see, you know, opportunities that could not have come your way, you know, they will, or maybe some other will, mm. it, it will all depend on when it's time for you, for you, you know, for you specifically. Can, can you it, feel, can you feel the, the disappointments, uh, uh, like now, for example, uh, or the the previous the the third lockdown. I, uh, I don't know. Are you are you still in the theater? Is still closed? So, can you feel that the more the longer it it uh, the time goes on, that the mm -hmm. disappointments get worse or or dif more difficult, or do you think it it's easier to to adapt? Mm. Uh, the initial reaction is stronger. However, it's a faster recovery for me, at least. So the initial reaction is, oh my God, again. And it's way, yeah, way stronger because you know, you, now you know what it actually means and for how long it, it can go. But the, yeah, the recovery um, and the time period, I guess, just get, get yourself back on your feet is, is way faster. Mm -hmm. At least yeah. that I found it to be true for me. Because then you, then you already know, you know, where, where to go for, I guess, how to help yourself. Mm. You know, these, you know, these things helped you immensely during the last lockdown. Like, you know, what things made you feel good, what things did, and you already know, sort of know a bit how to, how to be with yourself because it's a, I mean, the life of a singer, it's, it's mainly a very, it's a lonely life. Um, but there's, I think there's a difference between feeling lonely and alone, truly alone. Mm -hmm. Um, do, you, but, do you think there's more uh, a feeling of of uh, togetherness between artists at the moment because everybody's in the same situation? Do you think they are more supportive to each other or collaborating more? Yes, I think so, definitely. So in our studio, there's people from all around the world. You know, there's there's Russia, there's Venezuela, there's China, Lithuania, Poland, um, Ukraine, United States of America, you know, every and uh, all corners of the world. And what I did find during this lockdown, people, you know, we are like family to each other during these times. And everyone is, is you know, it's maybe the first time probably that people are asking the question, how are you genuinely? Mm. That is what, what yeah. I thought, because me, I, I'm, I come from the con from a country that you know that doesn't really do small talk. So oh, I things, see. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. So when I came, you know, because if you ask a Lithuanian person how are you, they will actually, I mean, well, probably you really want to know, so they will tell you <laughs> honestly. <laughs> like, if you ask them that, they will be surprised that you ask them that. Yeah, you know, yeah. They will probably oh, okay. You want to know? Okay, here goes. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, when I came to London, for me it was a it was a funny culture shock that you know people ask how are you and that they, they just like go and don't even listen for me to answer. I'm like okay, I guess you weren't interested yeah. in how. I <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so now I think we we really do ask that question more genuinely, and we listen for for an answer because, especially other artists, because you know everyone is going through the same hell. And you do want to know if, if the person is, is, you know, is okay. Are they truly okay? Not just like, oh, how are you? Okay. And then to continue talking about whatever. Mm. So I found that actually a uh, social interaction, I guess, very, it's a very interesting change now. Okay. Um, and and um, tell me, do you think in, in the situation and, and the people around you, because you're connected to a theater, so uh, in a way, you still receive your salaries, and and the theater yes. uh, does things make sure that you uh, also that there there are rehearsals and things like that. 
Um, yeah. But overall, artists uh, have uh, the sense that they are not valued or that their arts are not valued. And do you still uh, do you also have this feeling, or do you get that from from people? In a way, yes. I mean, I I must admit I was incredibly lucky with the situation that I'm in to have a stable job during these two years that the corona, you know, was and still is prevalent. However, what made me feel just really, really frustrated was the position of some of the opera theaters, like actually the Met, who wouldn't pay their musicians, you know, their orchestra players and chorus members. I found that to be such a disrespect to the art and, and just to people in general, because, you know, it's really, I guess it's really funny how in times of the pandemic, um, we as, as a humanity, we turn to arts for, you know, for entertainment and for comfort, movies, music. It's still, I guess, it's still not understood that music is something that you can do seriously, that it's an actual job. And, you know, people still might um, ask you to sing a gig just for exposure. Um, you know, mm. what, what would you ask a plumber to come and, you know, just like do the plumbing for exposure, you know? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but somehow, I guess, arts and music, they are divine in their own way. However, it's a very, it's a very earthly profession. You know, we all, we all need to eat and to pay our bills and to pay our rent. And I find it really funny that, you know, that people who, all the people that who turn to arts, you know, for entertainment, for comfort and to spend the time, they sometimes look at it as if it's, you know, yeah, it's there, you know, mm -hmm. we don't actually need to make sure the people who are making it are paid. Of course, it's not, it's not the most essential profession, you know, looking from the, I guess, the view of having doctors and teachers, but it's, it's something, it's something to heal your soul, not your body, which well, is as yeah. equally important in these times. Yeah, this is what I'm thinking now that seeing that we're in this pandemic, and I mean, you say it's probably not as important as a doctor, but I, I disagree. I think it's as important as the doctor, mm. as important as uh, for our health and and well being. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I was just making a point that some yeah, people don't the, the don't people consider don't see it that way. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and I'm wondering also uh, if people don't understand what it is like to be an artist. No, they think it's a very sort of bohemian, I guess lifestyle you know that you that you sing a bit you know you uh you drink a lot then in, in the evening with your friends yeah <laughs> you know basically moving moulin rouge yeah uh, yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 or you know yeah. phantom of Europe or whatever mm. uh but <laughs> no it's not true we literally have well maybe crazier work hours but otherwise it's you know it's a different kind of uh, profession that is very difficult to explain actually yeah but that is what I've also seen is is and and that is what I discovered through photographing the artists here in Vienna mm -hmm. is also that I see all, all the many years that you study um, the hours that you put in your work you know for for a role for example yeah. that uh, how many hours you have to to be coached or and and mm -hmm. uh, and study the role um, and all the rehearsals and then of course the the performance is just the one part of it all um, and I I have this idea that because because even I didn't have you know I I didn't know the music industry and mm -hmm. now I've learned that and just and and it, it changed my whole perspective on. Yeah on what it is to be a musician uh, and an artist. Um, and I'm wondering if artists should not be speaking more about this and, and let people know, because we all know how long an engineer has to study or an architect mm -hmm. or a doctor. Um, yeah. Uh, I, you know, I heard of, of singers who studied for 13 years 
not not in in all uh, you know uh, mm -hmm. added uh, and every time a master's degree and and that um you know and and i think if we understand that and if we hear more about that that there would be a different respect uh for what the artists are doing that it's not you know that it's they, there's a there's admiration for the art or a value for the art but for the artist yeah, yeah. there should be this value as well i think the problem with that that i see is that opera is still considered a very elitist i guess genre and that not a lot of people not a lot of general public is seeing as as you know as valuable and really really just amazing entertainment um because you know why why then would they care well you know how many years we study or how much work we put in because it's you know in their eyes it's something for the old people i guess or you know for some rich snobby people to enjoy which it's absolutely not true and i wish just more people would give it a chance mm. Because it's it's probably the most perfect um, collision of arts that you can imagine. It has everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you take the costumes, for example, um, that's also part of the art. Of, of, exactly. Yeah, it has everything. Yeah, and the, yeah, the dig, yeah. Region, mm. the drama, music, singing, speaking, also acting. Jesus, mm. it's you know, it's the whole shebang. Yeah, just happening in one place at the same time um and i just yeah people always say oh you know to understand opera it's really it's hard no mm. you just read the subtitles that's it yeah <laughs> you know? but do you think it it could be a possibility that we teach uh, uh, art in schools more seriously than we than it's at the moment you know that art can be one of the main subjects alongside maths and science that it gives children that exposure um, mm. and also the, the the development as well. I agree. I am not sure how it is in, how is it in, you're from South Africa, right? Originally. Yeah, yeah. How is it in South Africa? How do, do is there any exposure? In South Africa, it's not a lot of exposure because the, the, the arts, don't get funded i've i've left south africa a long time ago so i'm mm -hmm. not sure how exactly how it is now but i know there's only one theater where um where they do operas for example and mm -hmm. you know you know schools do this they do choir singing and there's possibility yeah. to play an instrument but what i'm talking about is real study you know uh, the way we do mm -hmm. math and the way we do science that that music is not just for those interested, but really for everybody. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they don't have to become um, artists, yeah. but that they study and that they learn the different art forms. Uh, you know, even if they can choose between if they want to dance or music or, or mm -hmm. visual arts, but, but, but that there's a definite, there's a definite, uh, a subject that they have to study and be examined on um, yes because that would that would be almost a, um, a way of of then also ensuring that people understand the arts um, mm. appreciate and that there are new audiences as well you know for the future and of course yeah. uh, politicians who understand art will also see uh, the value of art and see the the uh, support for art and artists in the future yeah i think that actually at least in europe might getting a bit better because there are currently like there's plenty of children operas on the rise mm -hmm. and i think they are getting young because i remember in zurich when they did um there were a couple of uh children's operas including i think it was there was one Conrad last year, and uh, what was another one? Oh God, oh, it was a very, very famous story. 
about the girl and the alternate there was like alternate parents normal parents and alternate parents with um uh with weird things for their eyes oh okay caroline coraline oh. coraline Coraline. Oh, was, okay. Okay. Yeah. There was Coraline, um, which I, it was on the main stage. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely amazing. The music was a bit, it was okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe not easiest to understand for children, but uh, the acting and the dialogue, it was just absolutely marvelous. It was this explosion, you know, of color, of emotions. And it was something, you know, that was familiar for children. You know, it's a story that mm -hmm. they know probably quite well because it's it's a quite a famous children's story. So I think if there's, you know, if there's a rise of children's operas, you probably will get some people interested in opera, some mm -hmm. very young interested in opera. Because I remember myself when I was a kid, I also went to this, I think it was an opera by Britain called Let's Play Opera or something like that. Uh, I was absolutely mesmerized. It was amazing. I was so jealous of all those because it, I think it was children singing. I was so jealous of all those children singing. And I thought it was just absolutely fabulous what they did on stage. So that that was one of my first encounters with opera and I absolutely loved it. So then, of course, that's a good preset for uh, for then, you know, teenage years and young adulthood and actually going to something more serious. Of course, maybe not not trying to sit through the whole ring cycle on the first go, although, you know, that is basically Lord of the Rings for you in in the genre of opera. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> so there's also, you know, a possibility yeah. for a huge fan. I would definitely mm. recommend. Um, mm. But yeah, it, it it gives you that preset. Mm. A lot, a lot of you know, opera being unpopular these times. I think is the wrong misconception of it being, you know, some as I said, elitist art form. It's not. It's just, yes, maybe, I don't know, 20, 30 years ago it was. Now it's not. The tickets mm. are very cheap. And it's just, I think that people are not aware of it. Yeah. Because there was such a long time of, I guess, it, you know, being associated with, with just the very rich and sort of posh people that now it's sort of still viewed as, as, it, is, no, as it is. But it's changed dramatically in the last, I don't know, 10, 10 15 years. Mm. Yeah, that's true, you know, and, and as you say, there are very, there are a lot of tickets that are um, reasonably priced mm -hmm. so that people could go in. And it's also this experience of going in the in an opera house and this whole, you know, it's, it's, it's an overall experience, I think. Yeah. Uh, and watching it live and, uh, yeah. No, it's... I uh, Mm. I do think, for example, the live transmissions that the theaters are doing, that's a very good um, opportunity to get more people to watch it and then maybe decide, you know, one day to actually see it live, truly live. I mean, now it's not possible, but mm. um, because I, I, for example, I watched, I bought a Medici TV uh, subscription and then I just went crazy with just watching through ballets, mm. um, masterclasses, operas. You know, mm. also not a huge opera go, which is because I am, you know, I'm in in this job. So you usually have the time or energy to do that. Yeah. But that to me was just, you know, it's a new appreciation, I guess, for the art. Mm. And and what do you think of all the streaming now being done? Do you think it's a good thing? I have mixed feelings about it. Um I think it's a good it's a good way to get more viewership. Mm -hmm. However, I I don't like the idea of opera moving more towards TV and internet. Oh, I don't okay. like. It. However, I do understand that it's a necessary. It's a necessity, mm. and I'm particularly not a fan of. We had this interesting talk with one of the agents, and we just asked them. So, how do you think you know it's gonna? How's the business gonna be in maybe five years? And he was quite, you know, he was sarcastic, but also there was a lot of truth to that. You know, you have to be a star, you have to be an Instagram star, uh, have true, you know, actor qualities, something like your, you know, your visual appearances, you might become very important because there's, there's not that, I guess, there's no X factor, you know, that, for example, people that don't look like the character at all, but 
they're so charismatic that you don't really mind it when you mm -hmm. watch it live because it truly like transcends everything. That is way harder to do through a screen. Yeah. And you know, and not I, for example, I'm skeptic about being on on a screen. It's you know, it's not what we train for really. Not you know, not to sing into a microphone and then for the sound to be transmitted. You know, we we train so many years exactly to do the thing you know to 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 sing with a live orchestra you know with a live audience which i think is just so electrifying electrifying and it's so energetically different from doing a performance just as a recording and it's such a shame it will be such a huge shame if that part of the art dies is the mm. connection with the audience and the sort of energetic um push and pull between artists and and the audience is gone I really, really hope it doesn't come to that, but with the declining numbers, I guess, in, in the audience, in the audiences, um, it's tricky. It's yeah. very tricky. I, I do agree with you there. And, and I think this energy um, backwards and forwards from the audience also, um, I can assume that you also play your part differently because of I course. think sometimes the, the, the way the audience reacts, you know, it fuels you in a way. And then uh, because sometimes you will also hear the, the, the artist saying, oh, the audience is a bit difficult tonight or, or you know, the, mm -hmm. the difficult exactly. to tonight or something like that. And Especially then, with uh, something like comedy. Can you imagine? Do yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're waiting for the loves and there's no loves. Mm. It's sad. <laughs> Yeah, but I think also when you do, you know, probably when you sing this aria so stunningly and, and there's this huge applause that, you know, when you then come on stage again or when you then go up, mm. this is this fueled energy that you receive. I don't know, I'm I'm not a singer, but I can just it's assume, so I can just yeah. assume that right. it's, you know, that way. Yeah, so, absolutely um, right. It's not, yeah. it's not even about applause, really. Um it's not about the applause in the sense, you know, if it's nice to get feedback, positive feedback. Yeah. But it's about it's about the whole creation process because the audience, they realize it, I don't know if they realize it or not, they are a huge part of it. Um, and that's what I find so magical about live performances. You know, everyone is there. Truly, you know, you don't know what's gonna happen next. Mm, yeah. There's that, you know, suspense and that mystery, I guess, and the possibility of unexpected things happening that that is so that is so that's so amazing and so unique to the art mm. there's not a lot of art forms where um, you know even if things are rehearsed there's still there's still a huge possibility for spontaneity and the best shows usually that that happen is you know they all they, we always say oh that was you know the energy was amazing mm. you know well, what is that energy it's it's the energy the connection that you have with the conductor with the musicians with your colleagues on stage you know with and also with the with the audience you know they give they give their emotions maybe not vocally but you know energetically you can still feel you can feel the audience you know mm. um and it's 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 one of the most beautiful things that this this art form can offer yeah and i, I mean you hear that a lot from even um people who do television you know then mm. uh, actors who do television they always want to go back to the stage they always want yeah. to go back to the theater um, and, and play on, on, on the stage. And I think mm. it's this, this thing, you know, that they get from there. Um, yeah, uh, I guess it's it's being a bit of an adrenaline junkie in a way. Yeah, you know? yeah. Because, you know, things, things might not go as planned. And they usually sometimes, well, often they don't really. Mm. There's never a perfect show. I don't think so. And if it is, it's usually... You know, if something runs really, really smoothly, just without any hiccups, it's just like the audience is like, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's okay. You know, yeah. no one wants perfection. Everyone yeah. wants drama. Mm. Everyone wants things, you know. People want to be convinced that this, you know, this is happening in real time and it's our job to do so, mm. to create the illusion as much as we can of, you know, of this um, this couple falling in love, you know. At the first sight it's it's and i think you know with the recording and and streaming and the editing and sort of balancing the voices with the orchestra 
it's a great solution for the pandemic, but I hope it doesn't mm. carry into, you know, yeah. The, yeah. I guess the world afterwards. And and do you think when artists do these uh, little cons you know, singing from their living mm. rooms and making these little videos, um, do you think that's a good thing? I I find those charming. I find mm. it uh, because I think it's they do it as an outlet for themselves, which which I find really amazing because usually, well, not usually, maybe some artists you can tell they're doing it, you know, not for themselves, but for the, I guess, for the money, for, you know, for popularity. There are people that are motivated by fame and it's perfectly fine. Um, but I found that people who, you know, who did those little concerts, they mostly, you can truly say that, you know, it's their way of keeping themselves sane. Mm. You know, of course, it's a it's for everyone else. It's a thing to be enjoyed, definitely. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I really don't. I think and that's a brilliant thing. Those concerts from home. And I think also because of it not always being that perfect, it's uh, also a good thing. You know, because I think that uh, shows also that side of of uh, the artists um, that people normally wouldn't see. Uh, so I agree. I'm always, yeah, I'm very. I also enjoy it. I think it's it's for me. It's wonderful and daring if people do that. And also, you know, it's also just stripping down, stripping down all of the things like decorations and fancy dresses and your know, huge orchestra, and it's just you and the pianist, and that's it. Mm. And music. There's nothing yeah. else. Yeah. And it's I guess it's the purest form of art that you can have. Mm. It's the simplicity of it that is. That is so striking, and is and the intimacy, like it's it's just yeah. I find it so mesmerizing and so needed in these times. Mm -hmm. No, I totally agree with you. Um, so listen, tell me, what is your wish when this is all over? <laughs> huh. My wish when this is all over. Honestly, I don't. I don't really have. A wish it's not different at least from from any wishes that I have generally mm. because I, I'm trying I'm truly trying to take this as a lesson you know and time time for growing and for sort of making inner peace with yourself um, so my my only wish as it is as it was is for me and my family to be happy and healthy and that's mm. it and do you think, um, uh, and and of course you you talked about the performances that you that you wish that they or that that you hope that it doesn't just become uh, recorded. So mm -hmm. live performances. Do you think also that uh, audiences are are a bit more hungry for live performances now? I hope so. I definitely mm -hmm. am. I'm at this at some point I got really sick of the whole you know live streams and it says mm. oh how mm. much more yeah um, I understand yeah it's necessary mm. but it's and especially you know if it's pre-recorded I just I can't be bothered to watch mm. it mm. if it's yeah if it's not live um I I of course I think you know after this time people and in this time especially people have been going out you know more into nature and trying to connect to things out of their screens so you know talking more to family and friends at least that's what I was trying to do um, for myself so something like a live performance and to actually the, the the feeling of community even in the short span of two hours and or three hours I think it's such a now it's such a sacred thing mm -hmm. it seems like such a you know it seems like something we haven't had for so far, so so long, and now it just seems like something unattainable, but also wonderful, and hopefully that it will come back soon. Mm. Well, that is so wonderful to hear you talk. You're very positive, and and um, I love hearing your right. insights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so it's so good that you already you know see the positive side of of everything that happened. And I'm so happy that you uh, baked bread. Ah. Um, <laughs> and I, and I'm, my wish is that you keep on baking bread. Oh, thank you. Because, you <laughs> because you've done it now. And, uh, and, I, and I always think the, 
the magic is that about uh, baking bread is that um, if you think it's only flour and water and you've oh. created something, you know, like that, it's it's the basic form of creation, but it's it's a lovely it's a lovely exactly. idea always, yeah. It's extremely gratifying, and it's also you know something yeah. to take care of, mm. um, especially I guess as a woman, you know, we we do have that maternal instinct. Well, not maybe all yeah. of us, but most of us. No, do. no, no, yeah, yeah. That's so, it. you know, sort of feeding your sourdough startup every day. It's like, okay, you know, taking yeah. care of my yeah. little baby. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? When I, when I started the project, the first couple I photographed, um, uh, he was a, he's an actor um, yeah. and, and his girlfriend. And um, so I photographed them. And, of course, I, I didn't even know I would be ending up photographs in so many people but but they were the first couple and I photographed them and just as I and and they and this was in the first lockdown so I couldn't go in the house or anything so we we talked through the window and they were on the fourth floor and mm. they asked me through the window they said that they baked bread or, or they, they asked um if I wanted bread because they baked and I said yes please and they went so, so we just wait a second and I was standing outside so the next minute he came out to the window with a basket and a rope and they had two semel uh, um, rolls in there and and I can't remember what the uh, um, Laugenstangel um, they had in the oh. basket and they lowered it down for me <laughs> oh my god that's so sweet do you know this is this is so amazing i can so remember that and that feeling that was so exciting you know and and if you think it's bread and it made me so excited um, oh i forget yeah. you it's one of the best things like bread with a little bit of butter yeah and I uh, better yeah. than any gourmet food yeah, so I, I remember it so well that day, you know, with the with the little basket and the rope and how they planned it up there and ran to the window. It's like, we'll be back now. We'll be back. So, <laughs> I also so, think that there's something something so special about bread specifically that and especially uh humans sharing it among their amongst themselves, you know, that's exactly. serious and yeah. strong religious ties and you know, cultural, various cultural, yeah. you know importance is i guess placed on that particular food mm. because it's the fundamental i guess definitely it's the, yeah it's the fundamental yeah. and for me like i enjoyed baking bread and actually giving it to someone i mm. love the, the so totally just because, agree. Yeah. because there's so much love put into that loaf of bread so much time mm. and, and waiting and you know impatiently okay when are you gonna rise yeah um, yeah and I think it's like one of the best things to give other people. Yeah. yeah. No, no, definitely. I totally agree with you. Yeah. But anyway, um, have a lovely evening. And it was Thank so lovely to talk to you. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> it, uh, I feel honored that you took the time to talk to me. And all the best for you. And I hope this performance, the next performance happens. Um, Thank you. So and, um, and that, uh, yeah, that you can have some good quality time uh, with your family and um, as well because that was your wish yeah. thank so, you uh, you too okay and um i hope that one when, whenever you come in vienna please write to me so that oh. i can meet you in person i would i would love yeah. to talk to you yeah yeah thank you so much for inviting me. that was so so lovely oh uh, thank you okay thank you, see you okay bye yeah Stay healthy. Take care. Yeah, you too. Thank yeah. you. Bye. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.